Hello and welcome to another Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to go through the process of setting up your own server for a Conan Exiles private server. If you find this video to be helpful, please smash that like and subscribe button. It's really going to help us get towards our goal of a thousand subs. So the first thing you're going to do is take a look at the description below. I'm going to put a link towards this web page. This web page is the spot where Conan Exiles puts their own server manager out. Um, really, all we need to grab from here is we need to click this installation link, drop down to this installation thing, and we're going to grab the current version. You may be watching this after I make this video, obviously, so the current version might be later, um, but the process should be the exact same. So once you click that, you can just right-click, open in a new tab. It'll just download the installer. You can click and open it, and all it's going to do is open up this style of window. Now this style of the window can look a little overwhelming, but we'll go through all of it and go through all the process to make sure that you have everything you need to get your server up and running. The first thing we're going to do is set up our server name. So I'm going to call this a Key Smash server because you should subscribe to Key Smash Studios. Um, and then the password could be anything that you want. So ASD, ASD for me, I'm not going to leave this up for too terribly long. So. By the time you watch this, the server will be down. So it doesn't really matter what the password will be. This one can be QWE, QWE. Um, these are just the, the server password is how you log in normally. The admin password is how you log in if you want to get to the command line, like if you're a server admin. Maximum player count you can control. So, you know, if you only want 10 people on, um, all that stuff. You can also set which location that's pretty important so uh, I, i'm in north america so i set it to north america nothing that fancy here archon i'm not setting up but if you do have archon archon is how you connect to the chat within the server to an external chat service um that's a pretty involved process and if you'd like to hear about it and have a more in-depth guide into it let me know down below in the comments and i will make it happen but for right now, we're just going to avoid this. You can turn on anti-cheat. For me personally, I create these servers for myself and my friends to play, so I don't really care if Andy cheats on because none of us are really cheating. They're really private servers. So it doesn't it doesn't matter for me. If you would like to turn them on, if you're letting random people join your server, you should definitely turn them on. Discord has integration as well. I've not really messed with it, but you can play around and find it. Backup and automation we should do. So when the server shuts down, we want it to back up the server. And you can select a location where you back this up. So for me, I'm just going to put it in a blank folder on my eDrive. And I'm going to limit that back up to three days. That meaning that every three days, it deletes the third day and then backs up the, the day before. Uh, you can tail that out as long as you want. Uh, and you can also put your own automated .bat scripts. If you haven't done .bat scripts, I would recommend avoiding that because they can be a little bit more involved. Um, but if you are capable of making your own .bat scripts, you can throw them on here, say, you know, if you wanted to do some server maintenance. As far as automatic restarts, they're a good idea, especially on servers. So you should do an automatic restart and set it to whatever time you want, 9 in the morning, something like that. You can set a, a minimi minimum uptime, meaning that if I accidentally bump my computer and it reboots at 8.30 in the morning, it does not automatically restart at 9 in the morning. It's a pretty solid thing. We don't really need more than one server restart per day if we're doing a private server. And we can say... Our warning messages here. If you have Discord integration enabled, you can pop into a Discord server with a uh, a webhook and say, "Yep, the server's up. It's restarting. It's shut down. Whatever it is, um, make all that happen." So here on this, you'll probably notice that this is blurred out because this is my MAC address and IP address. On yours, you will have that there. Um, but most importantly, there's a little button here, which you probably won't be able to see. It says test port accessibility. And if you click that, it'll pop up a thing asking for you to allow access. Um, and that says that these ports are not successfully open. And that's because we haven't installed the server yet. Uh, once we install the server and it's up, we can then test the ports and see if they're open. I will get to port forwarding in a second. It's the last step in the server process. Um, but 
Now that we've set almost everything up here, we can go to some of the other things that we need to talk about. The last of which is a mod list. So I've grabbed an example here. If you would like to add a mod, this is just a random mod from the workshop. You can come up here to the user and the URL and it has the ID. You want to copy this ID here, come back to your port thing and put it here. You will then separate any additional mods you have with a comma. So comma and then next mod, so on and so forth. I'm not actually installing any mods. That's just an example of how to set one up. So now that we have all of this done and set up, we're going to hit save changes in the bottom right here, and then we're going to hit install server. So what this is going to do is going to open up Steam CMD for you and then start downloading everything that you need to do to install the server. Please note that it installs it in the folder where you have the EXE. So it's going to install it in your downloads folder if you just leave it in your downloads folder. So go ahead and move it to a new folder or be prepared to move it afterwards. So this can take a bit of time. It's not a super small server. It's not super huge either. It's about 2.9 gigabytes as of this current version. Uh, depending on your internet, that could be a while. It could be pretty short. So I'll come back after this update status is done. So after that finishes, you'll see that it automatically turns on the server. And you can see some of the logs that are popping up here in the bottom as it goes through the server start process. It's not officially up yet. We'll see in a second once it finishes building the persistent level. So as this goes, I want to talk a little bit about port forwarding. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is port forwarding. You'll see that right now I have a green dot next to one of these ports. That's because on my other video, the Arc server video, I have already port forwarded the Storm Steam query port. But I do not have the game client and raw UDP port port forwarded. So you will need to go into your router and port forward those ports. Every router is going to be different, so there's a way that we can do this. If we go to portforward.com, we can find our router. So almost every router in the world is listed on portforwarding.com. You can find a step-by-step -step guide to every single router. So if you have a D-Link router, uh, you can close out this ad. If you have a D-Link router and you have whatever model, it will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to port forward. You'll find this link in the description below. I highly recommend you go there and, and follow that experience um, because I'm not going to be able to give you a video guide on every single router in the world. There's just way too many. Um, so go find the step-by-step -step guide, follow it. You're going to port forward a couple ports that are here. If we open up this, this Conan Exile thing, this is going to tell us the ports that we need. So the game client port and raw client port, you're going to port forward 7777 or 7s to 7778. TCP and UDP, both are going to be port forwarded to your computer. That goes to your local area network. If you'd like to look at a video that has more information on how port forwarding works, I'll put a link right here in the video. If you'd like a video that has a little bit more in-depth guide on how to do port forwarding with an example of it, I'll put a link right here. Once you have both of these ports port forwarded, then and only then will somebody be able to go find it on the Steam dedicated server list. So an example of this working on my router is that I'm port forwarding port 7777 to 7778. Uh, and I'm going to tie this to my specific internal IP address. I'm port forwarding both set TCP and UDP. So after you've tested this out, we can take a look at some random servers that are on Steam. And if you hit add a server here, you can put your external IP address here, followed by a colon, and then the port that is listed right here on the Steam query port. So if I put a my external IP address here, which I will blur out, followed by a colon, and then the Steam query port, which is 27015 by default. I can click Find Games at this address, and we'll see that now that I've port forwarded, my server is up in Conan Exiles, maximum 10 players, the base map, Exiled Land, all that jazz. So that's everything we needed to do to get that server up and running. One last thing I want to touch on, um, if you would like to change any of the server settings in the INI, 
Um, you can do that by clicking down here on the bottom and then editing this INI, and then whatever you do, you just hit Save Changes. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave me comments down below. There's a Discord link in the description below. You can hop in there, pester me about port forwarding. Uh, if I didn't put the video links to those two videos inside the video clips, I will put them in the description as well. As always, I hope this has been helpful. Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, all that jazz. It really does help us out. If you found this to be really helpful, I'll put a link to our Patreon in the description below. You don't have to, but any help that you can give us would be wonderful. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next week.